How fitting to be talking about revenge romances today after the Vanderpump Rules finale on Wednesday. Talk about karma. Talk about some people just getting what they deserve. Oh my god. Okay, did anyone else watch? If so, chime in below. And also how fitting that this video is also in collaboration with Tori from Novel Life because her and I live texted through every single episode of the Vanderpump Rules reunion as was airing every week. So we are both massive fans. So definitely let's chat in the comments below about it if you'd like otherwise let's just stick to the books which is what we're here for today so as I said before this video is in collaboration with Tori so she asked if I wanted to talk about some revenge plot romances and at first I was like hell yes and then I'm like oh wait let me make sure that I have enough and actually I ended up with quite a few Rex. I think I have like eight or nine on this list so yeah Let's just go ahead and jump into them. I'm very excited. I love a good revenge story. And how could I not begin this video with talking about the ultimate revenge plot romance? So granted, it's not between the two main characters, like one getting revenge on the other, but it is in one's quest for revenge. Y'all know I had to include it right here, Miss Lana Myers herself. So the Mind F series by S.T. Abby. So this is five little novellas all into one book. So it looks hefty, but trust me, like it's five individual novellas and they've been super, super quickly. They all end on cliffhangers. It's so good, so quick to read. So this one follows Lana and she is a serial killer. She has a list of people that she is tracking down and killing and that she is getting her revenge for for something that happened in her past which you do learn about just make sure you check your triggers because this book is dark and she ends up meeting just by chance one day at a coffee shop she ends up meeting Logan and they kind of hit it off a little bit and turns out that Logan is an FBI agent who is trying to catch her but he is unaware that the criminal that he is profiling is now his new girlfriend and it is their romance but also so much of it is around Lana's revenge and her you know getting her justice that she deserves and we support women's wrongs on this channel here so absolutely love this one if you haven't given a go and you like and maybe if you're more of like a thriller reader and you're just getting into romances I think you'd really like this one if you want something super fast paced and something that's going to keep you hooked this series is, I literally can't recommend this series enough. It's so, so, so good. Next up, we're gonna go with another OG of mine. So many people have read this before, but if you haven't, here's another dose of encouragement to get to it. And that is Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. So this is the first book in the Devil's Night series. It's four books, all standalones following different couples. However, you do have to read them in order because there are plot themes that run like throughout the timelines of the books. But this one, first one follows Michael and Rika. So this one is revenge because because every year on Devil's Night, Michael and his three best friends used to all get out and about town and just create some havoc and get into some trouble. And one Devil's Night, three of them are arrested and sent to prison. And now is it maybe like three or four years later, the other three are out. Michael is the one who didn't get sent to prison, but his three friends are out of prison now. And the four of them are ready to seek revenge on Rika, who they think she is the reason that the three of them got sent to prison. And Rika is currently dating Michael's younger brother. So there's also that in the mix as well. This series is just like... <laughs> so good it was my first dark romance series I ever read it's not like the darkest of the dark but definitely there is some like questionable things that obviously happen in here so make sure you check your triggers again but I just absolutely love this one it delivers on everything in terms of like plot the revenge the hate to love between them especially because Michael is just like he's relentless kind of in his pursuit of revenge against Rika until then he starts to realize that like oh he actually wants her too but then he still wants his revenge but he like wants to be hooking up with her because he thinks that she's really hot it's just so good so good and the series overall is one of my favorites books two and three are my personal favorite though so finish Michael and Rika and then you get to my two favorites. Next up let's head into a mafia one. So I actually have two from the series however they're standalones within a series so like there's no connecting plot between the two of them and also like if you only want to read like the second one you could jump straight into that one but I'm just going to talk about them in order that they released and the first one is Hooked by Emily McIntyre so this one is the first book in her Never After series so this one is a spin all this entire series is a spin on classic fairy tales and this one is Peter Pan except make it mafia in like modern day world so this one follows James and Wendy and James is a mafia boss James Hook so it's Hook and Wendy 
and he is a mafia boss in one night he's watching the cameras on his club feed and he's like how amazing to see Wendy walk into one of his clubs and Wendy is the daughter of his business mafia rival and he you know ends up talking to Wendy charming her a little bit and then eventually kidnapping her in revenge or like for revenge against her father and to kind of like use her as a bit of a bargaining chip and Wendy she naive she like really starts to fall in love with James she really starts to like be like oh maybe he's like Maybe he is for me because Wendy has really lacked a lot of love from her father. And, you know, then it turns out that he's just kidnapping her. So yeah, the revenge in this one is not between the main couple, but I feel like it's just as fun when it's like, again, when it's like a mafia world and she's taken as revenge because of her father's actions. Because then to see, you know, a lot of the times like the guy at the end having to choose between like his revenge or the girl. Oh, so good. So yeah, that's Hooked. And then my personal favorite in the series that I have read and loved so much this year is Scarred. So this one is book two, but again, you could jump straight into this one. You're not going to miss anything if you don't read Hooked. So this one is a Lion King retelling, and this one follows Sarah B and Tristan, right? Yes. So Sarah B, she has been raised to basically be married off to the king of this kingdom, whatever, and kill that entire royal line and get revenge for her father who was killed by them. And so she, when she's now like of age and King Michael is about to, or like maybe Prince Michael, is he King Michael already? I don't know. He's like about to become king because his father recently died. So she has arranged to marry him. But then when she arrives in the castle and in the kingdom, she meets Tristan, who is the king's younger brother. And at first they like really don't like each other. But then they start to realize like, do we maybe have similar aspirations here because Tristan has always lived in his brother's shadow. His brother has always been a piece of garbage to him and he very much dislikes his brother and dislikes that he is also taking the throne. So they maybe realize that they have more in common than they thought and then they also start to fall in love even though she has arranged to marry his brother. I just love that. I love when it's like the forbiddenness between the brothers and she's with the one but she wants the other. So good. I love Sarah in this too. She's such a badass and like she's going to get her revenge but also she's going to maybe like come to her own revelations and like really realize like what it truly means for her. It's just so good. So good. Absolutely love this one. Okay this next one I'm like barely going to talk about because I don't want to give any spoilers, but I'll just kind of like set it up a little bit for you. And again, it's a super popular book, but it's one of my all time favorites and I had to include it. So that is Twisted Love by Anna Huang. So this one is the first book in the Twisted series. Again, all standalone. So you don't have to read any of the others. You get the couple's like complete story in here. And this one follows Ava and Alex. So Ava is a photography student in college and her mother died when she was younger and her father has just kind of been like a little absent with her. So she really relies a lot on her brother, Josh, to like I don't not like take care of her but just you know to kind of watch out for her a little bit and Josh though he is a doctor and he's getting ready to go overseas to like do some medical work so he enlists his best friend Alex to just kind of like keep an eye on Ava while he's gone even though like I said she can take care of herself but you know just someone else to like be watching out for her kind of like he normally does and Alex reluctantly agrees he's a very grumpy CEO billionaire ice cold like doesn't care about anyone or have any feelings or have any emotions and he ends up agreeing and Ava is just very like sunshiny. She loves life. And she decides to do this like Operation Emotions kind of thing to try to like pull some emotions out of Alex. And you know, maybe she can melt. He has a heart of ice, but for her, he'd burn the world. And you know, maybe he'll melt it a little bit for her. I love this. Now I can't really say how it fits into the theme of this video. So I'll let you read that for yourself but I absolutely love and adore this book. And if you are like me, and one thing that you love in books almost more than anything else is the cold rage, not the fiery like snap of a finger, quick temper, but the cold burning rage that comes out of a man when his woman, woman is threatened or something or something happens, you're gonna love it. You're going to love it. And I love it. So anyways, okay, had to include that one. Next up, this book. 
This book equally frustrated me, but it's also so hot. I had to include it, and that's Carnage by Sarah Bailey. So this is the first book in the Four Horsemen series. There are four books in the series and they all follow the same people. So just a heads up on that, you don't get the full story in this first book. I've read the first two. I do plan on finishing the series at some point. I just like haven't gotten around to it. So this one is a billionaire reverse harem amnesia romance. So this one follows Scarlet and she is sent, she's like 25, 26, and she is sent to go be an assistant for these four wealthy billionaire men at this company because her parents have put her up to it to kind of infiltrate them and to get revenge for her parents. She doesn't really know what she's getting revenge for, but like this is what her parents have told her to do. And she doesn't really like know any differently. So she's like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll go and like infiltrate these men. And when she arrives, these men are like, do you think we're stupid? Because they look at her and they're like, this is our childhood best friend, Scarlet. Like us four have always been a foursome but we used to have a fifth and that's Scarlet. But then there was an accident that happened when they were all teenagers and she like disappeared and they have not known what has happened to her. And when she shows up, she has no memory or like no recollection of them and they realize that. And then they also know that she's there for revenge and they're like, you know, we can instead now get our revenge against her parents using her. So it's like the two sides, both trying to use Scarlet to get revenge on the other and Scarlet ends up falling in love with them. I mean, it's a slow burn. It's definitely a, uh, reluctant love um, because the men come on very strong in terms of like they're very angry at her for things too and like there's just a lot of history going on there that you'll read. It's definitely not quick however because she gets with all four. It's wild but also check your triggers. It's a little darker and there are some you know questionable things like some dubcon and stuff in here so just be aware of that going into it but oh it's just a wild time, y'all. Okay, what do I have left here? Sabotage. Oh, I forgot. What are they? I think Colton and Rayleigh. Colton and Raylan? Rayleigh, I think. I forgot to write down their names, but I've talked about this book quite a bit. But that's just because it is fun. It is freaking fun, guys. Okay, just suspend your disbelief a little bit and enjoy it. So this one is a step-sibling enemies to lovers romance. And this one is not as specifically like a revenge plot in terms of like, there's long-standing history between the two characters or like between third parties that one of the parties is like seeking out revenge for. This romance instead is more that these two do little things to each other and then the other retaliates and gets revenge for them. So it's just a lot of like little revenge plots throughout it sprinkled in with just a lot of craziness. So these two are step siblings. I forget whose parent married whose, but they're both under the same roof. And I think they're in college. And again, the parents are rich too. So they're always like running around with this mansion, nice cars, all that fun stuff. They hate each other but they also love hooking up with each other. Like they are matched perfectly in that area, but in other areas they can't stand each other. And Rayleigh does have a boyfriend and Colton doesn't like that. So maybe he leaks certain things of her online and then she retaliates by maybe burning his car. Like it's just, they are the definition of a toxic romance. Do uh, These two are not soulmates. There's no way that they are making it past the epilogue. However, their story is so fun to read because it's just wild and like truly the antics that they get up to with each other is just such a blast. So pretty much the entire romance is them just like going back and forth and doing messed up things to each other and hooking up. Just give it a go. Give it a try. Open mind. Okay. And then this other one, again, I just talked about this. Which video? I just talked about this book in a recent video. I'm going to again, keep it very vague because truly this one, you don't want spoilers. And that is The Devil by Ashley Jade. So this one falls Everly. So her mother passes away and she is left in the care of her soon to be stepfather they weren't like officially married and he is running he's like involved in politics and business and what so and Everly really has a fear of leaving the house and she just doesn't really feel comfortable like being around a lot of people so she's really become fairly isolated and her soon to be stepfather kind of becomes one of the only people that she can rely on and they both end up you know being into each other however they're all also ends up being a third person coming into the mix and that is okay so I think Kane and Damien I can't remember who is who but so then I think it's Kane is the stepfather and then Damien ends up coming into the picture and he's like running against Kane for like this political position 
and Kane and Damien have a bit of a past and then also maybe Everly ends up interested in Damien. That is all I'm going to say because truly I know that's not a lot but when I tell you the revenge will be so good to uncover yourself and fully learn about the pasts between these characters that it is worth it. You don't want me telling it to you. I promise you, you want to read it yourself. So it's The Devil and The Devil's Advocate. So it's a duet, but they're both really short. I want to say they're both like around 290 so pages. Like they're both pretty quick, very fast to get through, very easy to read. You don't know whose motivations to believe. You don't know what characters you want to trust, what ones you want to root for. It is what, even at times you're like Everly, the heroine, you're like, do I even want to be rooting for her? It's wild. It's truly wild. It fits perfectly within this revenge plot video, but I just can't really specify what that is. So just trust me and read it for yourself. That, oh, okay. So I, so hard because this book fits really perfectly in with this thing, but it's, a, it's the second book in a duet. So you do have to read the first book in order to get to the revenge plot, but I'm going to just toss it in here at the end anyways, in case if you haven't, oh, and I didn't even grab it off my shelves. Okay, well, in case we haven't read it yet, and that's Haunting Adeline by H.G. Carlton. So the first book is Haunting Adeline. You have to read this one because they both follow Addie and Zade, and it is a continuation. However, the one with the revenge is Hunting Adeline. So book two, but like I said, you have to, have to, have to read Haunting Adeline first. So I'm going to talk about that, and then I'll just like maybe briefly mention what revenge you're in for in the second book. But if you're ready to like build up to the revenge, trust me, it's going to be worth it. So in this first book here, this one follows Zayd and Adeline. So Adeline is a writer and her grandmother passes away. She leaves Adeline her house in like the middle of the woods, very creepy, like gothic kind of manner like. And Addie really likes it. However, when she gets there, she starts realizing that she's seeing a man watching her outside of her window. And then maybe he starts leaving like roses on the countertop for her, getting into her house. She hears a creaking at night. And that ends up being Zade. And Zade had seen her, like her photo on a storefront for one of her writer events. And he was like, oh, she's beautiful. I like her. And he starts stalking her. And you know, even when she hires and puts in a security system, um, well, guess who owns the security system company anyways, and can bypass it like it's <laughs> Zade. He's just, you know, he's a determined fellow. You gotta admire his hustle. Anyway, so this first one is a stalker romance and definitely slow burn, dark, kind of messed up. However, Haunting Adeline is truly one of my favorite books that I read last year. I love that book so much and it fits so well with, with the revenge. So there's a cliff, a huge cliffhanger that was brutal to wait for at the end of Haunting Adeline, heading into Haunting where it picks right up and there is something that has happened. So Zade is involved in some pretty He's not involved in shady business. He's more involved in shutting down shady businesses that comes into play in the second book. And then I'd say like the second book, a good chunk of that is Addie and him on their revenge hunt against some people. But I can't really say like what has happened to get to that point, but I just wanted to throw it in there in case if you've been thinking about reading this duet and you just haven't picked it up yet, but you're in the mood for like revenge. And then you're like, oh, I didn't realize that the second book kind of had that. I wanted to still throw it in here. And also just because it's like one of my absolute favorite duets ever. I just love it, love it, love it. So anyways, that is all of my revenge plot romances. Make sure you go and check out Tori's video for more. I will make sure I link it down below. And also if you are not subscribed to Tori's channel, make sure while you're over there, you subscribe like comment leave her some love she's amazing I love her and very glad that we were able to do this and I'm excited to see her Rex as well because I just love a good revenge plot it's just oh, it just adds something so fun to stories so anyways that is it for today's video I don't know what's gonna be up next Tuesday I guess you guys will be as surprised as I am so anyways that's it for today's video and I will see you when I see you